please welcome from South Africa, Pastor Gabriel Tombella. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Tell somebody next to you, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. God is good. It is so wonderful to be back home. For me, this is home. I, I, I travel different places, but I always look, look forward to come home. Allow me before I, I, I forget and before the, the, the Lord and the Holy Spirit takes over to greet my parents in the Lord, Baba and Mama Dean Swanson, in the name of the Lord. I greet them, I respect them. Um, they prayed for me. I, I am what I am because of their prayers. Um, I, I want to pray my brother and my sister, uh, Pastor Bill and Sister Carla, and uh, the leadership of this church, and, uh, and, and everybody who's here, I'm, I'm, I bring greetings from South Africa and the continent of Africa. Amen. Because I believe that um, this, this is a new season after COVID. I believe that God is going to um, increase our territory. Oh, that, that, that was a miscall. Let me, let me say that again. I believe after COVID that God is getting ready to increase our territory. <laughs> Your territory, my territory, your family's territory, your church territory, your working place territory. God is about to increase that. I, I, that is the whole, I was not planning to say that, but that, that is the Holy Spirit saying that. So, 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 so get ready. Get ready for the increase. I'm not preaching about that, but get ready for the increase. As they were singing and praising the Lord, I, I saw the increase, increase. There was a song they sang about Jesus. Jesus, they repeated that, that name. Do you know that that is a powerful name? Do you know that the, the name of Jesus is powerful? There's no name that is powerful. And the name of Jesus. When you call the name of Jesus, you're done. Just call the name of Jesus. You don't have to, you don't have to say anything. Just call him Jesus. It is a powerful, powerful name. They, they sang the song and they, it's like, I can, I, can, I, can, I can come here and say, sing it again and again and again because it is a powerful name. The name, that Je the name Jesus is able to open doors that are closed. When you call the name Jesus, things that are not happening, they begin to happen. Uh, when you call the name Jesus, the healing comes. And, and this morning, we are going to call that name. And, and the healing will take place today. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My father was healed. When that man who was praying for my father, he sang a song and he said, 
Jesus loves me, this I know. And my father was healed. Amen. Having gone all to which doctors, all which doctors. But that man came with the name Jesus. I remember my grandfather asked him, he said, what do you have that we are going to give my son? Because, you know, witch doctors in South Africa, they, they, give, they give you something. And my grandfather said, what do you have to give my son? And, my, my, and, my, and this man said, I don't have anything. I have Jesus. <laughs> and my grandfather said, what? You got, what, what is that? Who, who is that? And, and this man tried to explain. And my, and, and, and my grandfather said, okay, go call that man. That man. Is he a man? Is the, 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 this man said, he's Jesus. And his, my grandfather said, go call him. And this man explained to my grandfather who Jesus was. And eventually, praise God, he said, lay hands on my son and call that name. And he stretched his hand and put his hand upon my father's eyes. And he called the name Jesus. Jesus. And my father was healed. Because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Increase. Increase. There's something that the Holy Spirit is doing. I don't know what it is, but the Holy Spirit is doing something right now. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is doing something right now. I don't know what it is, but he's doing something. <sighs> yes. Yes. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it. <laughs> Do it, Lord. Yeah, we let you, Father, do it. We decrease so that you in increase. Do it, Father. Second Corinthians. I'm not going to be long. No four hours, no five hours. But if you don't say amen, I might, I might, maybe I might, amen. I might. <laughs> I always be careful when I come in this country because I know you love your time, so. <laughs> um, Second Corinthians chapter 12. This morning, the Lord has laid in my heart. I have been praying and praying and praying. And the Lord brought this message. Just one word. Grace. 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 There is power and grace. We are what we are because of grace. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. But maybe let, let me start from verse 8. Because that's where my, my, my message is. And I will read with the, this translation that I have. Verse 8, chapter 12, Corinthians 2nd. This is Peter, uh, this is Paul 
uh, speaking here, you were speaking about uh, about a man who, who who saw a vision and all of that, and and he come to this to this place, and he said in verse eight, he said, concerning this, he was speaking about concerning the thorn, the thorn that was in his body. Now, the thorn. Um, I'm not going to talk about the thorn that was in Paul's body because uh, many, many Bible scholars are interpreting it in many ways. So to me, it, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's why, that's why I, I, I'm not focusing on the thorn. I only know that he, he had a thorn. And, and he says in verse 8, he says, he says, Concerning this, I entreated the Lord three times that it might depart from me. You know, when, when it says that, it was not like a one, two, three thing. It was a long time. He prayed for three times thorough prayer. He took his time praying for this thorn because, number one, for him, it was an embarrassment. And for him, it was pain. And praise God that God sometimes look beyond our pain. He look beyond our troubles. <laughs> he look beyond our things that concerns us. Do you know that there are things that are concerning you that you stop praying sometimes? because of the things that, that are surrounding you. But God looks beyond that. So Paul said, I entreated the Lord, I prayed. I prayed for three times for the Lord to take this thorn away from me. And eventually the Lord says, listen to this, and this is my story and this is my message today. Verse 9 says, and he said to, to, to me, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul, for power is perfected in weakness. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is powerful. And your word is truth. Speak to it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul was so concerned about this. He could preach. People will be healed. But he was so concerned about the thorn that he had. And the Lord says, Paul, don't worry about the thorn. I know about the thorn. In other words, God was saying to Paul, Paul, I know that you have the thorn. God is saying this morning, I know you have what you have. Don't worry about what you have now. Because I know about that. But this this, I want you to know that regardless of what you are going through or what you have, my grace, my grace is enough for you. My grace is sufficient. What does the main sufficient mean? What, 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 is, what does that mean? When, when, say, when, I, when I say, I've got sufficient. Is it, what? 
say, say, say it. Say, more than enough. My grace is sufficient. In other words, you lack nothing, Paul. Because my grace is with you. When you preach, my grace is with you. <laughs> when you pray for the sick and they get healed, it is not you. Don't look at you because I know you. Don't look at you because I know you. Leave you to me. Oh, let me say that again. Leave you to God. And know that his grace is sufficient for you. In your house, his grace is sufficient. In your body, his grace is sufficient. In your place of work, his grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you. For the power is perfected. My power is complete. My power is, is clean. My power is pure. My power is perfected in your weakness. You might be feel weak, but you have power that is pure. You have power that is clean because of grace. Oh, allow me to talk. My power is perfected. The power that I have in you is pure. Is perfect. In your weakness. I know you feel weak. weak but my power is perfected. That's why you are able to come to church. Sometimes you wake up and say you don't know whether to come to church or not. You feel weak, but I, I, I'm here today to tell you whether you feel weak, your power is perfected because of his grace. Of his, when you think of his grace, know that you've got power. When you feel weak, think of grace of God. When you feel sick, think of the grace of God. When your children are acting that way and this way, think of the grace of God. That the grace of God is sufficient. The grace of God is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you. For power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses than the power of Christ, that the power of Christ may dwell in me. I will boast. <laughs> How funny is that? I will boast if I feel weak. That's when I will boast. If I feel sick, that's where I will boast. If I feel lazy sometimes to read the word of God, that's where I will, I will boast. Boast in you, because that's that, 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 the enemy, he wants you to suffer in your weakness. He makes you to suffer because you are weak. Once you open the door and allow it and say, I am weak, the enemy gets to get in. But if you feel weak and you boast and say, I am weak, praise the Lord, I'm weak. 
<laughs> I don't feel like going to church. Praise the Lord, I'm going to church. I have a headache this morning. I, I, I don't think I'll go to church, but praise God, headache, I'm going to church with this headache. <laughs> Maybe your back is not, is, not, is, not, is not allowing you to walk or to drive. Take something, take a jacket or something or dress, fast, fast, fast. And, and, and fasten your waist and say, I am, I am, I am, I am going to church. <laughs> Boast in your weakness. Don't allow the enemy to get a place in your weakness. Because that's where the enemy gets you. When you say, I am weak. The Lord said, you are strong because I have my grace in you. The only thing that caused us to preach where, where we are weak, it is because the grace of God, my, my, the grace of God makes you, makes you. Don't ever use the word weak. Sick, tired. Because once you use the, you open door. I am telling you, you open door. You might not feel it, but you open door. And the enemy is standing right there. He's watching you. Once you say, I am sick, he's in. Debbie, he's in. But when you feel sick, you say, boy, I feel strong. And your husband will look you like, like, like you're crazy or, or your wife will look you like you're crazy. I have a headache, but I'm strong. <laughs> I have my back, but I'm strong. My food head, but I'm strong. My hand is not working, but, uh, but I'm strong. My brother, maybe you, 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 you'll play that keyboard. Maybe one of your fingers is not working. Play that keyboard because you are strong. The grace of God is sufficient. The Lord sent me from South Africa and the continent of Africa just to tell you that his grace, his grace alone is sufficient for you. And we are going to pray for the people here for the grace of God. If you feel like you need the grace of God, because sometimes it is hard it is hard to say I'm strong when you are weak. It's not easy. But praise God that the power of God is perfected in our weaknesses. When we feel like we are weak, we are strong. I think there's a song that says that. Is there something that I think, I think there's a song. When you feel weak, you are strong. And when you are strong, you are stronger. And when you are stronger, you are stronger. The more you are stronger, the more you are stronger. The more you say, I'm strong when you are weak, the more you are stronger and you become stronger again. Don't, don't ever say I'm weak. My boys are preachers. They preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
There was a time when my oldest, my oldest son, Baba Dean Mountain, they know him, and, and, and Bill, Bill knows, knows him, me, so he's a funny guy. He's a good preacher. There was one time where he went astray, and he started to drink. He started to drink. For, 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 for a sudden, for, for a moment, we were kind of like, what is going on? Because when, 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 you start think, when you start experience something, you are getting shocked a little bit. But all of a sudden, I told my wife, I said, you know what? Let us forget about Simiso's drinking. Let us be strong. And, and, and the moment we are strong, the love of God will come to our hearts. And when we have, listen to me, listen to me. When we have the love of God in our hearts, this love that we have will be sufficient, will, 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 will be abundant. And when this love is abundant, it will reach out to Smiso. In other words, when we see Simiso drunk, we want Simiso who is drunk. <laughs> we will see Simiso who is a preacher. We will see Simiso who can preach the gospel. Sometimes we will tell him, we said, drunk as he is, we said, you are a preacher. Because we, 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 we wanted to be strong. It was the time of our weaknesses. It was easy for us to, to hate him or to, to chase. But we said, you are a preacher. Every time when he comes from college, we said, oh, here, here comes the preacher. Welcome home, preacher. And he'll kind of laugh and laugh and laugh. He didn't know that we are planting a seed. He didn't know that we were weak. <laughs> But we are strong at the same time. My God. We were weak, but we, we never allowed we, the, the door to open. We shut the door of weaknesses. We opened the door of strength and power. Because we knew that the power that we have is pure and perfected by the God, by our God. And we said, here comes the preacher. One day he came home and he said, Father and mother, I am tired of drinking. Pray for me. Pray for me. I want to be a preacher. Pray for me. How can I do it? We said, pray. God will give you. Boy, he can preach. He can preach. Because we never allowed and never, never opened the door of weaknesses because of grace. And we're always when we, when we talk to him, we talk to him with love full of grace. Do you know grace? Do you know grace? Grace is something amazing. It is something that can change your life. When I, when I see a drunkard person or I, I, see, I, I see somebody who does not know the Lord, my heart is filled with grace. It's like I can reach out to that person and say, my brother, my sister, God loves you. Regardless of what you're going on, regardless of what is happening in your life, God loves you. That is the grace. That is the grace. I've written some few, few, few things here. I'll read it and then I'll close. It won't take two hours. No. No. Because I can see, I hear that amen. Spiritual blessings are more important than physical blessings. Grace does that. Sometimes we want to see blessings physically. 
We want to have a beautiful house, beautiful home, beautiful children, beautiful all things, some material things that I see. They say they're, 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 they're nothing. What we need to pray for is our spiritual blessings. Always. i rather have nothing but full of spiritual blessings. Because if you have, if you are blessed spiritually, boy, nothing can touch you. Even the enemy knows very well that you are full of blessings. Spiritual, you cannot, the, the good thing about spiritual blessings is nobody can, can, can see them. Only you alone. Only you alone that I am, I am filled. When you wake up in the morning, you feel this blessing. Sometimes it makes you to cry. Sometimes it makes you to laugh. <laughs> Sometimes I'll wake up and I'll cry. My wife say, why are you crying? I'll say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And the children will see, see tears coming in the kitchen will be, and tears will begin to run. And my son, my, my son will say, How, why are you crying, daddy? I say, I'm blessed, my son. Because I can feel it. Only me, I can feel it. You can, take, you can take my suits, okay? You can take my shoes, that's okay. You can take my house, that's okay. You can take, you can take, but don't take my spiritual blessings. Never. The enemy knows that I've got spiritual blessings, and he knows. That's why I shut the door, preventing my spiritual blessings. Because he, the enemy is looking for that. He knows once he steals the spiritual blessings. You will begin to complain. You'll begin to cry. You'll begin to whine. You'll begin to be lazy to read the scripture. You'll begin to do all kinds of things because you've opened the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Be strong when you are weak. The spiritual blessings are more important in your life than the physical blessings. The physical blessings are good too. They're good. But pray more than anything. Pray for the spiritual blessings. Does it make sense, brethren? Yeah. An answered prayers does not always mean that the need is not met. Oh boy. Let me say that again. Unanswered prayers does not always, catch always, does not always mean that the need is not met. Sometimes you'll pray and it will seem like God is nowhere to be seen. And keep on praying and praying and no answer. And that does not, that does not mean that God is not going to meet your need. God is time and time is God. He knows exactly what you need. And he knows exactly what time he will meet those that need. We sometimes, we, our flesh are in a hurry to, to see God working in our lives. But sometimes it does not always come easy. We have to sweat sometimes. We have to cry some more sometimes. Oh my God. 
Sometimes we have to cry some more and some more. Cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. And it seems that God is, is, is not where. And that time God is right at the corner, right there, right there at the corner. He's looking at you. He says, watch, 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 watch. <laughs> He's there in the corner, somewhere in the corner. You're crying that time, God, answer my prayer. I've got this, da, 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 God, and God. And he will, he'll just looking at you. Say, watch him. But the day he shows up, my goodness, your life will be upside down. Sometimes we get greater blessings when God does not say anything. Oh, yeah? Sometimes we get more, more blessing when God is, is just say anything. Because God is looking at your heart. You can pray and he, he cannot say, but if he sees your heart is right, is clean, he just pour your blessings. Without any speaking. True. Okay. I think one hour is gone. Let me, let me. This is powerful. I like this. And I'm, 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 I'm about to close with this. I'm about to close. This is powerful. This is that one. This is powerful. If, 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 if everything I said, you did not catch, I pray that you catch this one. Because this is powerful. Weakness is strength only when God is in it. Let me say that again. Weakness alone is dangerous. But weakness is strength, is strong. Is power when God is in that weakness. Boy, I love that. I love that. That keeps me going all the time. That keeps me in my knees all the time. That as long as God is in it, Nothing is going to touch my family. As God is in it. Nothing can touch me. As God is in it. My danger is will leave God aside. My prayer this morning, don't leave God in your troubles. Don't leave God in your weaknesses. Don't leave God in your sickness. Don't leave God in your trouble. In whatever happens, invite God to be with you. Invite Jesus to be with you. Because in your weakness, in your in, in, the, the strength, in your weakness, the strength, you are stronger if God is in that. Do you understand, church? In your weakness, if God is in the midst of that, my God, I'm strong. I can, I can move mountains as weak as I am because God is in it. As long as God is in it. Let me give you some examples, and then I'll close. Look at Gideon. Do you remember Gideon? Gideon said, I've got power. My nation is young. We cannot do anything. What God says, he says, Gideon, go with that power, with that little power, with that small power. Go, because I am in that power. I will, be, I will be in that power. 
Invite God in your troubles. Take a look at, 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 at Joseph. Take a look at Joseph. The giants, the big men of Israel were afraid. And Joseph came and picked up five little stones. Five little stones. Because God was in that in, in there. He said, I killed the lion. I killed the bear. How can this, this enemy despise the army of God? I cannot kill him. I'm going to go to the river and pick some few stones. <laughs> few stones. One, two, three, four, five. And put it in the bag. And people, they think, because always when you do this, people, they think. <laughs> and he said, I can fight this man. They said, what? He said, I can fight this man. Are you serious, David? You don't have a spear. You don't have a shield. You, you've got a little bag. In that little bag, God was there. <laughs> in that little bag, God was there. He knew that God is here. They didn't know because people cannot see what you have. Only you know. And you've got, take, you've got to take that authority. That I know, that I know, that I know. That I've got power. Yes, I'm weak. When, when you see that man, Goliath, when you read about Goliath, he was a big man. He was the biggest man. And when you compare David and Goliath, when and David said, I'm going to kill this man, they say, no. And he said, yeah, give me a chance. And this man said, hey, are you giving me this? What is this? I'm sure David said, Lord, take over. Jesus, take over now. This is your time. Whew, he took a stone and put the sling. When you do things of the Lord, it's like you are crazy. <laughs> when you do the things of the Lord, it's like something is wrong in your head. But you've got to do it anyway. <laughs> your family will think you're not, there's something wrong. But you've got to do it. He took, took a little stone and put it in a sling. And he started to wing the sling. <laughs> And the Bible says that the stone went straight between the eyes. It never went this way or that way. Right between the eyes and the, and, and the giant fall down. Boom. You've got power in your weakness. I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. Look at Moses. Take a look at Moses. How many people know the sea? Not the ocean. The sea. There's difference between an ocean and the sea. The sea is something, it's, 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 you can look until you can look no more. And he stood there with, with, with a rod. A rod. Just a simple rod. Because God was in the rod. God was, was here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? God was here. And Moses said, God... I'm doing what you told me to do. And people, they think, what is he doing? The army is coming to kill us. Moses, 
Pharaoh is coming. What are you doing? All of a sudden, shoo, shoo, and he said, "Come on." He said, "Come on, let's go." Even though there were there, there, there were doubters here. <laughs> What did they do, Moses? The, the rod. Hmm. Because the rod. God was in the rod. In your weakness, you are strong. As long as God is in it. Let us close our eyes and bow our heads and pray. The Holy Spirit wants me to stop right here. I have come to let you know <laughs> I could speak so many things so many messages big messages but I don't have big message the message that I have this morning is the message of grace of God just the grace Hide behind the grace of God. God knows you. He knows your trouble. He knows your sickness. But His grace, my God, this morning is so sufficient for all your needs. The grace of God is able this morning, tonight, now to meet whatever need you have. 